The RCI instrument is comprised of different modules designed to provide functional versatility and obtain precise formation pressures and high-quality formation fluid samples at discrete depths within a reservoir. The six-tank carrier is designed to efficiently collect multiple samples during a single trip into the well. The sample view module is a near-infrared spectroscopy module. Its primary purpose is to monitor in real time the formation fluid being pumped by the RCI, particularly in wells drilled with oil-based mud. The large volume pump allows rapid pump through for large quantities of fluid, such as might be expected in a straddle packer application. The larger capacity expedites any sampling process, which results in less rig time while allowing quality testing in fractured, buggy, or tight formations. The drawdown module performs three very important functions, pressure test drawdown, pump through, and bubble point analysis. The single packer module is the heart of the RCI. The testing and sampling operation begins when the RCI is positioned within the zone of interest and a hydraulically actuated pad or packer contained within the module extends from the tool and seals against the borehole wall. The straddle packer consists of two inflatable packers that are set in the borehole wall, isolating the section of the formation to be tested. The straddle packer isolates a one-meter zone, allowing a larger cross-sectional sampling area to contribute to the sample and resulting in less drawdown. It is also used for many DST and microfracturing applications. This animation shows an example of pressure testing with the RCI using the single probe packer and the small volume drawdown pump. The graphic shows the pressure response of the quartz gauge in the single probe module measuring hydrostatic pressure. The pressure is constantly changing by a few PSI until it finally stabilizes. When the pressure stabilizes, a hydraulically actuated pad or packer contained in the packer module extends from the tool and seals against the borehole wall. The abrupt increase in pressure is due to the compression of fluid in the probe as the pad seals against the formation. A small quantity of fluid is drawn into the tool to confirm a seal has been established. The pump draws formation fluid in repeated drawdowns or pressure tests. These pressure tests can determine fluid contacts, gradients, reservoir connectivity, and producibility. As fluid flows into the tool and pressure builds up to a final stabilized value, the profile of this pressure buildup provides information about the mobility of the fluid in the formation. Numerous repeat pressure tests may be conducted without having to reset the tool and packer against the borehole wall and without forcing fluid back into the formation. Pressure test flow rates and volumes are controlled from the surface. The primary purpose of the straddle packer is to overcome the limitations of the standard probe in fractured, buggy, and tight formations. The straddle packer consists of two inflatable packers that are set on the borehole wall, isolating the section of the formation to be tested. The straddle packer is inflated by pumping borehole fluid through a large area screen in the six-tank carrier using the large volume pump. As the elements are inflated, the pressure in the isolated area increases due to the compression of the borehole fluid between the elements, as can be seen in pressure response of the quartz gauge. The inlet between the two inflatable elements contains a built-in quartz gauge and sample line temperature probe. A filtration element is placed around the entry port to prevent the ingression of debris and mud solids into the sample line. Once the inflation process is complete and a seal is established between the borehole wall and the elements, testing can begin. The large volume pump begins to pump out from the isolated section through the borehole exit located in the six-tank carrier. Depending on the size of the borehole, it can take from several minutes up to hours to pump out the isolated area before actually pumping formation fluid.
As pumping continues, the pressure in the isolated cross-sectional area begins to decrease, starting from hydrostatic pressure to a final stabilized pressure below formation pressure. The straddle-packer pressure curve shows the pressure response as the large volume pump withdraws fluid from the formation and pumps it through the tool and out of the borehole exit. When it is determined that we are pumping pure formation fluid, pumping will then cease, and as fluid continues to flow into the isolated section, the pressure will build to a final stabilized formation pressure value. The profile of this pressure buildup is analyzed to provide information about the mobility of the fluid in the formation. Calculating the pressure gradients in the formation also provides an indication of the fluid densities and the API values of the formation fluids. The next few minutes of the animation will illustrate how the RCI tool is used for conducting mini DST and vertical interference testing. When conducting a mini DST, it is always a requirement to run the single probe directly above the straddle packer to assist in determining the vertical component of permeability. This part of the animation shows the single probe positioned directly above the straddle packer and sealing against the formation. Just as in the previous animation, the pressure response of the quartz gauge in the single probe module first measures hydrostatic pressure. When the pressure stabilizes, it seals against the formation and conducts a series of repeated drawdowns to ensure that a seal has been established and that formation pressure has been achieved. Once formation pressure has been achieved, a mini DST can be performed. This part of the animation will illustrate how the RCI performs a mini DST VIT. The purpose of mini DST VIT is to estimate horizontal and vertical permeability of the formation. In order to perform this testing, the RCI utilizes the large volume drawdown pump, the single probe packer, and the straddle packer. The large volume pump will first extract fluid from the borehole interval isolated by the two straddle packers. Then it will extract clean fluid from the formation for an extended flow period. The pump will then be stopped to record a buildup period. The reservoir fluid continues to flow until pressure in the isolated interval is equalized to the formation pressure. This pressure in the isolated zone will be recorded while it increases for the extent of the buildup period. The extended buildup period allows the spherical and radial flow regimes to be identified and the permeability to be estimated. The graphics above the straddle packer shows straddle packer quartz pressure gauge as the fluid is continuously pumped from the formation through the tool and out of the borehole exit using the large volume pump. The upper left graphics is the pressure measured by the single probe quartz gauge, which represents the vertical component of the pressure disturbance created by the straddle packer. During this time, this operation can be combined with the sampling operation to obtain clean, uncontaminated formation fluid samples, as will be demonstrated in the next animation. The single probe response will mimic the response of the straddle packer throughout the entire operation. The single probe can be used to resolve both horizontal and vertical permeability in cases where no radial flow can be seen and also can be used to confirm the straddle packer response when radial flow is seen. After completion of this testing, the data is sent to Baker Atlas Geosciences for further analysis using Interpret Formation Transient Analysis Software. The buildup data will be plotted on a log-log pressure derivative plot where the spherical and radial flow regimes will be identified and the permeability calculated. This animation shows how fluid identification is performed with the RCI instrument. The fluid is pumped from the formation through the sample view fluid analyzer using the large volume pumps and straddle packer or single probe. Sample view module contains a visible and near infrared fluid analyzer with 19 optical channels, and it provides real time near infrared spectra as well as refractive index. 
and fluorescent spectra of the formation fluid as it is pumped from the formation. It consists of a collimated light source whose light passes through a sapphire window, then two millimeters of crude oil at temperature and pressure, and then another sapphire window. The light intensity is reduced as it passes through the crude oil. It is reduced more at some colors than at others. We are able to determine how much the light intensity is reduced at each of a series of colors by using a series of wavelength selective detectors. The vertical axis on the spectral plot below is optical density presented on a logarithmic scale. 1 OD is a factor of 10 reduction in light intensity at that color. 2 OD is a factor of 100 reduction in light intensity and 3 OD is a reduction by a factor of 1,000. By monitoring sample view response, samples can be acquired at a minimum contamination level. The channels are closely spaced over the highly absorbing asphaltine region of the spectrum, which is the region most often used to monitor contamination levels. Therefore, in most cases, there will be at least one channel that spans the entire transition from nearly pure filtrate to nearly pure formation fluid. When the optical properties of the fluid being sampled stop changing, the sample has reached a minimum contamination level. The fluid can then be diverted into a sample chamber for retention. In order to obtain accurate PVT analyses, it is essential that the collected samples be as clean as possible to be representative of in situ conditions. In addition to the optical density measurements, fluid identification of methane, liquid hydrocarbon, and water can also be obtained. The graph on the left shows a spectrum of heavy oil. The graph on the right shows a representative sample cleanup over time as the sample view response of a channel levels off, as well as refractive index. High-quality samples are essential for PVT analysis and intelligent completion decisions. Once we are confident that the fluid being pumped through the tool is at a minimum contamination level, we can then pump the sample into the single-phase tanks. The RCI single-phase one tank consists of two floating pistons with a predetermined charge of nitrogen between the pistons. The sample is pumped into the tank against hydrostatic pressure. Once the tank is filled, pumping continues to compress the nitrogen charge and overpressures the sample. As the sample is retrieved from the well, expansion of the nitrogen gas compensates for the pressure drop in the sample due to temperature loss. The nitrogen also maintains the sample in a single phase during transportation to the PVT laboratory.